Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Now I'm on question number four in this June, October 2020 Mechanics M1 um, Edexcel International A level paper. And this question here is about moments. It says a non uniform beam AB has a length 80 meters and a mass m kilograms. The center of the mass of the beam. The center of mass of the beam is d meters from A. So it's a non-uniform beam, which means the center of mass is not exactly in the geometric center. So the weight doesn't act exactly in the center of the beam. It acts somewhere else. And they've told us that this, this place is d meters from A. So somewhere uh, away from A, d meters. We don't know what that, that, that value is, but somewhere over there. The beam is supported in equilibrium. So it's an equilibrium in horizontal position by two vertical ropes, one at C, where AC is 2.5 meters, and one at D, where DB is uh, 2 meters, as shown in figure 2. A gymnast of mass 64 kilograms stands on the beam at the point X, where AX is 1.875. So there's a point X, AX is 1.875 meters. Somewhere over here, there's a point X. Okay. And that's 1.875 meters. A gymnast is standing on this point, and the beam remains in equilibrium. However, it's on the point of tilting about C. So when the gymnast stands over here, what's going to happen is this beam is like it's about to tilt like this. It hasn't tilted like this, but here's C and here's D. Okay, and the gymnast stands over here, so there's a weight acting down here, which causes this to tilt. Now, it's just about to tilt, so it's still in equilibrium, but the important thing here is, when it's just about to tilt about C, then we can say that the tension in this rope, because there's a tension in these two ropes, okay, then the tension in this rope is going to be zero. If it's just about to tilt about C, all the tension will be on this rope, and this will have a zero tension, because it's about to lift up. It's about to go up, so this will become slack. There will be no tension in there at all. So it's at the point where it's just about to tilt. So this tension has become zero, and all the tension is in that rope over there. Okay, so that's the key, I think, for this question. Um, part Then it says the gymnast then dismounts from the beam. A second gymnast of mass 48 kilograms now stands on the beam at the point Y, where YB is 0 0.5 meters and the beam again remains in equilibrium, but now it's on the point of tilting about D. So this time, the gymnast here gets off, and there's another gymnast that comes on here at the point Y, which is 0 0.5 meters, and now the, the, the this is about to happen. It's about to tilt about D. So all the force will be on the, all the tension will be in the tension or in the string D, and there will be no tension in C, because this is about to happen. So at the point where it's just about to happen, the tension in C is going to now be zero, and all the tension will be in here. Okay, so we have two different scenarios, because you can see we've got th certain things we don't know. We don't know the mass of the beam, okay, M, and we don't know the distance of the mass from the center, uh, the distance of the center of the mass from the, um, from the point A. We don't know the distance where it is exactly. All right, because it's not uniform. So we don't know the weight of the beam, nor do we know the distance it is from any point here. We've got to work out in this question. Let's see. So there's two unknowns. We don't either. We don't know the tension of the strings either. So there's like a few unknown things here. So it says the beam is modeled as a non-uniform rod, as they told us already. The gymnasts are modeled as particles. Find the value of m. So we got to find the value of this m, given that uh, we have a few unknowns. D, m tension in C, tension in D, there's some unknowns. But because I gave us two separate situations, okay, um, we can do something about that. I think we can get an equation with two unknowns in it, M and D, and I'll show you how we can do that. We first consider the first case, okay? Let's consider the first case. Now let's just say that the, the mass of the beam is acting at this point here. We don't know what that point is. Let's just call it, call it distance D. So the distance between these these two points is going to be D. Oh, that's a bit big. One second. Make this a bit smaller. So the distance between A and this MG is D. So this is the distance D that they told us about. And this is the weight of the beam, which we call MG. You have a tension in the string. I'll call that TC. 
attention the string td now when a gymnast stands at the point x where x is 1.875 meters away from a so somewhere over here so let's just say this is the gymnast whose mass is 64 kilograms so that's 64 g weight and that gymnast is standing at a point okay which is 1.875 meters away from a so that's 1.875 meters i'll just mark that here that's 1.875 meters okay so when that's occurring then it's about to tilt it's it's on the point of on the point of tilting okay about c therefore the tension in d is equal to zero all right so now what we can do is we can make an equation using moments um, involving d and m if we take moments about c we don't have to worry about what the tension in c is because tension in c is going through that point and the moment about c of this tension is zero because it's equal to the force times the perpendicular distance and here the perpendicular distance of t the tension in c from c is zero so we'll only have to worry about these two um, items here and we can have some of those distances in terms of d we're making it one equation from the situation so let's do that let's find let's take moments about uh, c all right we need to know the distance of these forces from c so let's have a look we need to know this distance here okay we need to know this distance here which is from there to there that's the distance of this force from c okay the distance of this force from c well that's 2.5 minus 1.875 so let's work out what that is so we have 2.5 minus 1.875 that gives us 5 of 8 which is 0 0.625 so this is this distance is 0 0.625 so if we take moments about c okay then you're going to have this force uh, is anti-clockwise let's look at this force here as well let's look at the distance of mg we need to find this distance also of mg from c and we're taking the distances from the pivot c so this distance here if we think about it it's going to be d minus 1.875 okay um because from c no no sorry what am i talking about we want to find this distance from there to there okay now the distance is going to be uh, this distance here that's the distance we're looking for all right so from here to here is d i need this distance here the distance from c to this force the distance from a to the f this place is d this is d meters so this distance is d minus 2.5 yeah so clockwise moments about d you have mg times d minus 2.5 Okay, that's the clockwise moments, and they're equal because it's an equilibrium to the anti-clockwise moments, which is 64g times 0 0.25, 0 0.625. 64g times 0 0.625. Okay, so that gives us one equation, uh, which is, I'll leave it like this for now. I'll just work out what that is. Uh, 0 0.625 times 64 times 64 gives me 40. So that's equal to 40. G. So that's one equation from this situation. This is the first situation where the gymnast is standing on this side. Now, the second situation is the gymnast gets off the beam. We still have the weight acting at the same point, the point D. And we, of course, got the same mass, the, the beam. And that distance here is, is D. Okay, from there to there is D. Um, we still have these strings okay but now the difference is the the second gymnast 48 kilograms now stands at the point y where yb is 0 0.5 so now the gymnast is standing at this other point here y so yb is 0 0.5 and this is 48 g4 so 48 g 
weight and that's 0 0.5 meters from the end B. Okay, so now in this case, it's about to tilt. It's on the point of, it's on the point, on the verge of tilting, the point of tilting about D this time. Therefore, the tension in C is zero in this case. The tension in C is zero because it's just about to go up, so the tension, is, the, the string is just about to go slack. So it's just about zero, and, and this D is going to take all the tension now. So we can now do the same thing because we don't know what the tension in D is. We can take moments about D. All right, we don't have to worry about this because um, because this is going to be zero. We don't have to worry about this because it's going through the pivot. So the tension, the moment the turning effect of this force will be zero about D. So we think about the clockwise moments is going to be 48 G times this distance. So I need to now find the distances um, that I was mentioning. I need to find the distance from D to this point and from D to that point. Those are the things I need to find in order to take moments about D. I need to find the distance of those forces from D. So if we think about what this distance here is, well, this is 2 minus 0 0.5, which is 1.5. That's not, not too bad. And we want to find the distance between D and Mg. Now, I know that this length is from here to here is D, and I can see that the length from, from this point to, to this point D, okay, well, the whole thing is 8 meters long. Okay, the whole thing is 8 meters long. Up to here is 6 meters long from these two points. So the distance I need from this point here to this point is 6 minus D. So this is 6 minus D. So I can say here that if I take moments about D, okay, I'm going to have, let me just, um, if I take moments about D, the clockwise moments will be 48G times, that's 1.5. And that's equal to the anticlockwise moments, which is basically mg times 6 minus d. Let me just multi uh, simplify that. 48 times 1.5. <clears throat> that gives us 72. So we've got 72g is equal to mg times 6 minus d. So now I have a pair of equations which I can solve simultaneously. I have mg times d minus 2.5 equals 40g. Let me write that on the other page. So I have mg times d minus, what was it? Minus uh, 2.5. mg times d minus 2.5 equals 40g. d minus 2.5 equals 40g. That's one equation. And I have a, the second equation from the point, from the fact that the, um, you know they moved on the other side. It's about to tilt about D now. That's 72G equals mg6 minus D. So mg6 minus D equals 72G. So I'll write it like this. mg times 6 minus D equals 72G. That's equation 2. Now, I need to find what M is. So um, I could try to eliminate D. Okay, um, however, what I'll do first to make life easier because I'll have to expand the brackets and then make the coefficients the same and all that kind of stuff. What I think I can do easily here is first of all, we can get rid of the G's in both equations because if you divide both sides um, by G on both equations, you're going to get rid of the G's. So the G's can go. Now, what I can do is if I divide both equations, that will eliminate the M. Okay, I can find what D is and then I can use one of the equations to find what M is. I guess that's one way of doing it. Okay, because um, if I want to eliminate the D's, it's going to be a bit more hassle. So let me divide the two equations, I think it's easier. So if I take equation 1 divided by equation 2, the M's will cancel. I'm left with D minus 2.5 over 6 minus D is equal to 40 over 72. Okay, so we can now trying to find what D is by cross multiplying. Let me just first uh, simplify 40 over 72. That gives me 5 over 9. So you have D minus 2.5 over 6 minus D equals 5 over 9. Now I can um, cross multiply. So 9 times D, that's 9D. 
minus that's um, 22.5 I think 22.5 2.5 times 9 let me just make sure that's 9 times 2.5 which is oops 2.5 Yeah, 45 over 2, which is 22.5, is equal to, and you got 5 times 6, which is 30, minus 5 times minus d, which is minus 5d. Bring the d's together, you get 14d equals 52.5. So d equals 52.5 divided by 15. 52.5 divided by 14. And that gives us 15 over 4, which is 3.75 meters. Okay, that's not our answer, because we've got to find M, but it helps us to find M. So 3.75 meters is D. So I can use either of these equations. Um, I could use, for example, if I use equation 1, I have M equals 40 over D minus 2.5. So I use equation 1, I have M equals 40 over D minus 2.5. I just made M the subject by dividing both sides by d minus 2.5 and now I can put d as 3.75 in here so m equals 40 over 3.75 minus 2.5 let me put that in my calculator we have 40 divided by 3.75 minus 2.5 okay and that gives me 32 so we can say m is equal to 32 kg okay so there's the answer to that question okay so in this question here about moments this is kind of like a, a quite a common type of question you'll see in moments where you're given two situations okay two situations one situation is something standing in one place and it's about to tilt when it's about to tilt that tells us the tension in that rope okay um, it's about to lift up it's going to be zero it's just like if there was a reaction normally it's about reaction supports the thing is about to lift off one of the supports so the the, the reaction force on that support is zero in this case is tension in the string which is going to be zero okay because it's going to become slack so this is the case it's about to do this okay in, wh in which case this will have the tension and this will be loose okay but it's not done that quite yet it's still in equilibrium that's why i can say the clockwise and the anti-clockwise moments are the same okay that's why i can say that all right, so now, and then they give us another situation where the weights move to that side, and we can form pairs of simultaneous equations in order to find the unknown. There's two unknowns, D and M, so I thought finding D was easier because to make um, M coefficients the same, some of them are going to be in terms of D, some in terms of numbers, it's more hassle, all right? It's more hassle. So I just decided if I divide both sides by M, uh, by divide both equations by each other, the M will cancel out. Okay, and then we can find what D is and then substitute that value in D to find M. So there we have the answer to this question on moments. Other questions from this paper are found on this playlist that will appear in this section over here. <clears throat> over here in the around this area will be a playlist which tells you about or takes you to questions about moments. Okay, this playlist will be from this paper of October 2020. M1, you can subscribe to the channel over here and on the top of the link I'll take you to another past paper from M1 you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon.